Dr. Ellison. Today, a train derailed just outside of Loris. The general manager of our Carolina Southern tells News Channel 15 10 cars came off the tracks on the east side of 701 near Gurley. That was about 3 o'clock this afternoon. The train was carrying coal to the Granger plant in Conway. No one was injured. Carolina Southern says the cleanup should be complete tomorrow. McNabb Road will be shut down until at least the beginning of next week. And Gurley Train Track Road will be closed to through traffic until sometime tomorrow. Up on Capitol Hill, the Senate has voted to raise the minimum wage by more than two bucks to $7.25 an hour. That vote was 94 to 3, which includes $8 billion in tax breaks to help ease the impact on small businesses. Some senators say the increase is a small but necessary step to help the working poor escape poverty. The woman who claims to be James Brown's fourth wife wants half of the singer's estate and to be allowed back into the South Carolina home she was locked out of soon after his death. Tommy Ray Heine says she wants her personal possessions, including furniture that belongs to her and her five-year-old son. Brown's attorney says Heine never asked for any personal items from the singer's home. James Brown died December 25th in an Atlanta hospital. Tonight, a veteran Horry County police officer faces charges and has turned in his badge. James Kirkley now charged with four counts of soliciting prostitution and one count of his conduct in office. Johnny Morgan says another agency called them about a complaint made against Kirkley when the state law enforcement division investigated. Now, according to those warrants, Kirkley solicited prostitutes while on duty. It's just a kick in everybody's gut, more or less to say. Uh, officers, especially the Oregon County Police Department, I mean, we have to take so many strides and to and pride at ourselves in being professional in our work. Oregon County Solicitor Greg Hembury points out over the last eight years there have been several cases pending against public figures. We're told Kirkley tonight has posted a $7,000 personal reconnaissance bond. Police say a retired New York City police officer is being held in Charleston for questioning in connection with the murder of his ex-wife in New York earlier this week. Sheriff's Office says they stopped 61-year-old John Terry of Brooklyn on Interstate 95 on Wednesday. Police say Jean Kane was waiting for her daughter at a Staten Island park and ride when a bullet came through the car window and hit her in the head. Horry County Transportation officials a little worried tonight about a big shakeup at the State Department of Transportation. Former DOT Director Betty Mabry, considered a very good friend of the Grand Strand, is now retired. At the same time, O'Ree and Georgetown County lawmakers are clashing over who should represent this area on the DOT Commission. Officials concerned about what it all means for some of our local road projects. Without a leader at DOT, some projects will be put on hold or simply won't make progress until you have a leader in place. And with the commission setting priorities and we're losing two commissioners from the PD and Grand Strand, uh, we don't fare well without being represented. The Dean adds projects paid for by the new penny sales tax should be safe, but others might lose some ground. Grand Strand residents tonight waiting to see exactly what the Myrtle Beach City Council will do about where you can park to go to the beach. City Council brought the subject up again during a workshop earlier today. Council now looking at a blended system with parking meters and stickers along Ocean Boulevard and in the residential areas. Those who live in Myrtle Beach would be able to get a sticker that would let them use the parking meters for free. Council will continue to discuss the issue at their next meeting coming up on February 13th. The New York Film Academy says it plans to offer a year-round program at a private school on Hilton Head Island. The Heritage Academy has about 200 students in grades 6 through 12. Students identify a passion which can include the arts or sports before they're accepted. They study college prep classes and spend several hours a day in their area of interest, such as golf, tennis, or the performing arts. The film school says this marks the first time the New York Film Academy has partnered with a high school to offer its curriculum. This is News Channel 15 at 11 with Allison Floyd, Jim Heath, First Alert Chief Meteorologist Ed Piotrowski, and Sports Director Rich Grandanis. Coming up next. In tonight's Pump Patrol, record profits, the name of the game, and Exxon, a very big player this time around. And Harry Potter fans, listen up. Your big day's only a few months away. News Channel 15 at 11, back in just two minutes.